Hello, Anson Griffin here again with another YouTube tutorial uh, featuring MATLAB. Today we're looking at LiDAR camera calibration. And just to say before I start, all of this is available uh, on the web from MATLAB themselves, but I'm just going to run through it. So there are, if you're looking at this yourself, you might want to look there at this example here. And also this one here where I took the code from and I'm going to talk you through it. So we're looking at, if you're looking it up yourself, there and there. So I made out a slide. So there we are, just to give the IP credits, there they are. So what are we trying to do today? to estimate the rigid transformation of the 3D LiDAR sensor and a camera. So we can fuse the data. So that sounds quite technical. And again, I've taken this just to give full credit from this side here. So in modern cameras, or modern cars, I should say, you could have camera and LiDAR or you know, autonomous cars or something like that, and you want to be able to fuse the LiDAR data and the camera data. You know, the LiDAR data would be in 3D and the camera data is in 2D. Okay, I'm not going to read them. Your... This is what we're trying to do today. We have the LiDAR sensor. There's the point cloud, which will give you 3D points. There's the camera which will give you 2D, and then we're trying to fuse the two of them together. And we're trying to work out um, our errors as well, the translational error and the reprojection error and the rotation error, etc. So just there, we need to know the internal parameters of the LiDAR sensor and the camera. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute or two, and then we need to the external parameters as well, just down here as well. So with the LiDAR, the intrinsic parameters are published by the manufacturer, probably the same with the camera, but you can use the MATLAB camera calibration app to determine the intrinsic parameters if they're not provided. So we're trying to do, this is a screenshot from the MATLAB on this one we're trying to do today. There's camera images, there's 11 images, there's 11 point clouds, and then we fuse together to, and we get um, there and we can work out the errors. Okay, it's all that done. Back to the code. So I've taken their code, none of this, but just to give you some example coming down here. This is better because I might just be able to be able to see this. So here. So we have here, this is from Velodyne, which is sort of computer generated LiDAR data. We have the checkerboard, there's the camera, and we have moving around there. There's the, as it were, the individual camera shots. And then we can also see down here, the LiDAR data moving around. And this is just on a loop here. So we'll just look at that a second. We're taking the camera shots, we're taking the corresponding LiDAR shots, and we want to work out uh, the checkerboard points would be to detect the corners, and from that uh, we can work out 3D space, 2D space, etc. Okay, so the code is there, that'll be available when I publish this on YouTube, but I've also to make it a little easier. I've published it as a PDF. So I'm not going to go through it line by line because it's fairly advanced 
and I suspect that most people would have an idea. And I can't start at the very beginning because I have to assume that you know something about MATLAB. There we are. Camera image feature extraction, the corners. Same with the point clouds, calibrate views together. That doesn't move in the PDF. We just saw that before. But we saw in the uh, here, just in case I'm confusing you. We saw it moving around there. Obviously in the PDF, it doesn't move around. Okay. Scroll on down. So we just looking at the commands there, we tidy everything up. Gazebo is the sensor data. So this is an artificial, the created LiDAR environment. I've given you some sites there as well. Let's look it up. So these LiDAR, data sets and these image data sets are inbuilt in MATLAB. And, and there's the a, a calibration file as well. So we load the intrinsic parameters of the camera. We use a data store. We have 11 by one here. We have an 11 by one set of point clouds. Each checkboard is 200 mils by 200 mils or 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. We get the checkerboard corners here by using this command here. Okay. And just there, we can work out using this command whether we ignored um, some images and some uh, LiDAR points, but that's in data used. But when we run this example, they're all valid. So they're all, all 11 are used. There we are. We, there's a helper file. We show the four corners using that command. Then we detect the checkerboard plane. I'll come through it so help compute the ROI is region of interest. So we run through it there. Uh, we detect here, we detect the rectangular points. We delete any point cloud frames that are not used, but like the camera in this example, uh, they're all used. We remove the 3D corners from the image. There, just scroll down a little bit. Sorry about that. There's the LiDAR features in 3D space. Well, in effect, into 2D space, but that's the LiDAR images there. Now we estimate the rigid transformation matrix between the LiDAR sensor and the camera. Command there. Okay. And then after calibration, we could use that rigid transformation matrix just there. Maybe that's how you use it there. Let's see to visualize the LiDAR and image data fused together. So there's the LiDAR points. There's the colored LiDAR points. And then we can work out the translation error, the rotation error, and the reprojection error. There's the translation error. For the, there is the projection error, and there is the rotation error. Is that a re, sorry, rotation error, reproject, reprojection error. Okay. 
then you could test the workflow on this uh, the 16 bit LiDAR data to evaluate its performance. Not even going to bother reading that there. There's the 11 points. There's the translation error, the rotation error, and the rejection error. And in summary, in case I've lost you, what did we try to do today? It's highlighted there. Sorry, I've lost it. Rigid transformation to fuse LiDAR and camera data. That's all we're trying to do. And then if you want to look up the paper, that was the basis of all of this. That's Zoo et al there. Okay, so hope that helps a little and thanks very much for listening.